Good morning and happy Easter. My name is Joe Zunick and on behalf of the entire St. Malachy family, I want to welcome all those who are joining us for the first time since the pandemic or for the first time ever. 
We are so glad to have you here at Mass with us today. As we begin the celebratory season at Easter, we will hear and reflect on some of the most hope-filled passages of Scripture. At the vigil, we reflect on the numerous times throughout history where God brought his people out of darkness and into light, the greatest of all being when he sent his Son into the world to save us. After a period of time here on earth where Jesus encountered much sorrow and suffering, the disciples and followers came to understand his true purpose and what he meant when he said he came for us. And this is why we're so glad to see so many new and returning faces. He came for all of us. He died to heal us. He came to end our suffering, our isolation, and our despair. He came to bring us hope, peace, and joy. <laughs> We pray that this Easter season you will grow closer to our Lord and consider coming back to St. Malachi again. We are filled with great hope with what is to come here. Here at St. Malachi, we are growing closer to our Lord every day through new spiritual ministries, through scripture studies, and through pro programs like Exodus 90, Magnify 90, and Clover University. If you'd like more information on these, please go to our website or check in our bulletin. We hope that you'll come along with us on this journey, and we hope that you have a blessed and joy-filled Easter. Thank you.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, every Sunday we gather to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. But today on Easter Sunday, we celebrate it with greater solemnity, focus, joy and gratitude, faith and devotion, because our Savior lives. We call to mind what this means and where it moves us and points our lives and hearts. So with great joy, we gather here, acknowledging that we need a Savior, someone to come into our lives and lift us out sorrow and sadness, death and gloom. So let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of her virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Day, through your only begotten Son, 
I've conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God appointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Pascali laudes, Imolent Christiani, Agnus Reden Mitoves, Christus Innocens Patri Reconciliavi Peccatores. Moset vita duello, Conflix ere mirando, Lux vitae mortfus regnat vivus. Ignobis Maria, qui vidisti in via, se plurclum Christi viventis, set gloriam vidi resurgentis. Angelicos testes, sudari rum et vestes, sur exit Christus spes mea, precedet suos in Galileam. Cimus Christum sur exise a morturis vere, Cuc nobis victor ex miserere. Amen. Alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdala 
came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Does the empty tomb still grab your mind, your conscience, your imagination? Does it move you? Do you get the significance of what is happening in what we just heard in that gospel? What happened in that gospel changes everything, changes the course of human history because it means something. It means that Jesus is not just some good teacher with some good new ideas like anybody else. It means he is who he claimed to be, which is what got him on that cross. Who did he claim to be? He claimed to be God. God made man in the flesh. And they said, he's a lunatic. He's out of his mind. He's corrupting the people. He is dangerous. Put him on that cross. But that cross, his mangled, beaten, bloody body, he comes back from the dead. Not as some corpse, but in a glorified body risen from the dead, totally renewed, filled with wonder as the disciples saw him. Mary Magdalene, who meets him, doesn't recognize him right away. It's you, Lord. Oh, my goodness. You didn't look like this 24 hours ago. Oh, my gosh. In the upper room, when the doors are locked, How'd you get in here? Are you a ghost? No, touch me. It's my body. I'm not a ghost. My body has risen from the dead. It's here. Later on in the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how 500 people see Jesus alive. They meet him. They talk to him. They're fed by him. They experience the reality of the resurrection And that's all Paul preached. He went out and he said, Jesus Christ was killed and now he is alive. He then is the Savior. Resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. And a lot of times for us, this just falls to the background. We just kind of get used to this idea. Oh yeah, everybody just kind of rises from the dead. 
That's not how it was seen in the ancient world. We have to get into the right mindset. This changed everything. Their experience of life was pain, suffering, and death. Pain, suffering, and death. That sounds familiar to us, of course. We still seem to experience those things, and it's the devil that tries to get us to believe that that's all there is. Pain, suffering, death. That's your end. And then when you start to examine the ancient religions, boy, they didn't have a very good idea of the, ancient, the afterlife. It was a bad place. Dark, gloomy. Sometimes you had to pay your way to get in, and God forbid you didn't have what it took to get there. It would be an eternity of suffering and gloom. And so, when there's proof that Jesus Christ rises from the dead and encounters people, they're filled with joy and faith and wonder because now this changes everything. My pain, my suffering, the thought of my death, that doesn't have the final say on my life. My Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has claimed me, and he has drawn me into his life. Death will not have the final say on me. Jesus Christ and the life that he gives will have the final say on my life. And that's the rejoicing that all these first disciples felt. They had to tell everyone. They had to tell their friends. Don't worry. Death and gloom is not the end. What you're suffering right now, it's not going to be it. You can unite it to Jesus. He'll redeem it. He'll pour his life into you. And you will live forever. Death will not be the end. And they said, praise the Lord, hallelujah. That's the good news. They wanted their friends to know it. They wanted their families to know it. They wanted anyone that they could meet to know it. And that's why they went out and they told the whole world. And it spread like wildfire. It just spread across the ancient world. So it changed everything. From these first hand encounters with Jesus... And we're still encountering the living and true God risen from the dead every time we come to Mass, every time we come here. Do we have that faith? Do we have that hope in our heart? Do we see how it changes everything in my life? Do I open myself up that God can share that good news with me? Sometimes we close ourselves off and we say, the pain I've experienced, the pain I'm going through, the suffering in my life, it's just too much, God. Not sure you could do it. Not sure I believe. You need to believe. You need to renounce that unbelief and say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me to open myself and make myself vulnerable with you so that you would pour your life into me. It doesn't mean that I'm going to experience bliss all the time and all my troubles will go away, but it means that they won't have the final say on me, that I can pick up my cross with Jesus, accept suffering, and be transformed, be filled with life, and know that death is not the end. Is not a place of sadness and gloom because I have a relationship with you, Jesus, my Lord, my God, and you want to claim my life. And so I give it all to you and you give everything to me. Open your hearts today on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, because God wants to give oh so much faith, hope, strength, peace and that's what we need to take life one day at a time one moment at a time God is walking with us he's not the God of the dead but of the living 
and he's pouring his life into us right here and right now. Open your heart to him. I invite you to please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mysteries, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in His holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. turn to God, our merciful Father, for the great faith and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we offer up to him these prayers of petition. For the universal church, that with our Pope and bishops, we may proclaim the saving event of Easter. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the nations of the world, that the kingdom of the risen Lord may spread through all societies and cultures. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are baptized and received into the church during this holy season, that free from the slavery of sin, they will live a new life in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this worshiping community, that we will share the joyous news of the resurrection, that Jesus is alive with those we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they will return to life with him on the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We remember today's special mass intention, Regina Zelensky. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving and affectionate Father, pour forth your grace and strength into us as you grant our needs and prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of this holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, 
We offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic host Sing together the unending name of your glory as they acclaim. Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise that they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your old family. Order our days in your peace, which you, we make to you. Also, for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. 
With eyes raised, heaven, you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven. Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offered your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of, of your high priest, Melchizedek, holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar and I, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest and sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, Hope and your abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marshallinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and born by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in 
grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed oath and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace, Lord, be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Last night at the Easter Vigil, we were blessed to receive into the church many people who were baptized in other denominations, who were not baptized at all, made their first Holy Communion. That being said, just as a reminder, if you are not Catholic and joining us, RCIA is a great way to learn about Catholicism. That also being said, we do not have an open communion. So if you would like to come forward for a blessing, please indicate to us by crossing your arms or your chest like this. But you're also welcome to remain in the pew for the communion rite. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. On behalf of all of us here at St. Malachi, we wish you a very happy Easter Sunday. Enjoy it with family and friends. The office will be closed on Monday. Next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. You can join us for the Divine Mercy service at 2.30 in the afternoon. And as you leave Mass today, the high school youth group journey has little uh, treat bags for the kids, and so you can pick those up as you, from one of the, those members of the, the uh, youth group as you leave Mass today. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now, mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, in peace, alleluia, alleluia.